Today we're going to check out the brand new Rain Neo X2 AR glasses. These glasses are trying to provide us an augmented reality type of an experience, meaning you're still able to be in the moment, see through the glasses, and it adds all of the augmented experiences on top of that. We're talking translation, we're talking object recognition, the ability of using them to do first person view video recording as well as image taking, the ability of actually interacting with your device, having a lot of the processing, a lot of the work being done on glasses supported by the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 1 processor. Processor. We have 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, and even a ring to be able to control the glasses without even having to touch them. This is TK, and this is the Ray Neo X2 AR glasses. Let's check out all of the cool things these glasses can do. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So what I have in front of us is the main package. This is the Rayneo X2. These are basically you'll get the glasses and everything that you need in here. Now they do provide us with additional visor or basically a sunshade visor on top of that. And they also give us the ability of controlling it wirelessly using a ring that pairs directly to the glasses. Now what you get in the box is a carrying case. This is a very nice hard shell case directly for the glasses, made specifically for the glasses. Now I've already taken the liberty of actually loading things inside of it. Of course, you get the glasses. We talked about the shades. These shades are removable. They are basically clamped on. There's no magnetic configuration, but once you take them on, the glasses are very easily recognized as to where the displays are positioned. You have the main displays that are positioned in the center, as well as on a couple of on the side for navigation and of course, side information. Of course, we're looking at the micro LEDs in here with the brightness or peak brightness of up to 1500 nits. Because they're see-through, because this is an AR solution, you need to have them get bright enough to be able to overcome the outside light event. So this is definitely very nice. We do have a camera that's built in here, capable of shooting 1080p video and of course taking images with it for, as well. The couple of logos sitting at the top. Uh, they include a charging cable, it's a USB-A and it's a proprietary pin that allows us to charge and this actually kind of connects straight into the temple on the top right. Now conversely, this is also how you'd be able to transfer your content off the glasses because we do have, again, 128 gigs of internal storage with those 6 gigs of RAM uh, that basically are able to configure just as like a thumb drive. So you connect it to your PC, transfer the data, and this allows us to transfer content, which is really, really nice. Now the shades themselves are actually very simple. They are a clamp style shade, so you do need to make sure to put those directly on and fit them correctly. And I, my recommendation is just to push them on the top right, top left, and on the bottom. One thing I do like about this is the fact that they do include an additional nose bridge configuration. So in case you do want to change that, there's one that's already pre-installed. But also if you do need to actually put in, uh, let's say prescription lenses, because there's no actual way of wearing and secondary glasses with them. So we talked about them at the beginning. The displays are, as you can see here, they're positioned in the actual display is centered. So you're basically looking at them when you're looking at using these glasses, you're looking through them. And whenever they turn on, you're able to basically see the content. And when they turn off, they basically just become transparent. Although you can see them here because the reflection is hitting them. In general, when you're wearing them, you actually don't see them at all. The only times I've ever actually seen that there is a little bit of a difference in front of my eyes is when the sun was hitting them at a certain angle. So that's something to keep in mind. But one thing I will say that when you're using the visors, for the most part, or the, basically the sunglass attachment, again, put them on on the sides, clamp top, clamp side, bam, and now they're basically configured and you no longer have an issue with any kind of side glare coming in on these. Now, the right temple is pretty much going to be the center experience or the center focal point of this experience here. There's a couple of options in here. You notice that basically the arm does actually bend. Now, we also have that sliding experience here. So we have a slide up, slide in, and then we also have the tap, double tap configuration to control the glasses. An LED indicator here to provide us experience of when it's charging, when it, uh, basically it's fully charged. And the temple itself does have its own configuration of single tap and press and hold. So those are the things you just need to be aware of. On the right side or on the left side, we have a similar experience, although not as functional. It's intended basically to use to change the volume and the brightness level and to initiate the assistant by pressing holding this for one and a half seconds. So this is one of those shortcuts that you get to use. So what you're noticing here on the back is that we have a little bit bigger configuration than most of your glasses. Not only does it help us provide better weight distribution, but this is basically where your battery and your, your processing power is being done. All of this is lifted from the front, where if you've ever used any XR or AR glasses in the past, you'll notice that typically there's a lot of heat generation in the center temple. And that's because typically what they've done in the past is put all the electronics in the center and that's what generates the heat. 
Here we have them sitting in the back so the battery and everything configured. My imagining is that basically since we have the charger on the right, I'm assuming that this is the battery. Now one of the other things you probably notice here, we have three microphones that are positioned there next to the charger. We also have the speakers that are actually directional speakers so you'll get a chance to see them. They sit roughly right next to where your ear is and they're basically pushing the audio straight into your ear. Let this focus. There is a couple of options in there to be able to use them. So standard mode, you're using them, they're playing the audio directly from there. And then the second one is the, uh, what they're calling is whisper mode 2.0 for privacy allowing it to reduce the uh, basically the power of the speaker but still providing you clear audio and allowing it so that not everybody around you can hear you. Again, it's a configuration that is just typically known whenever you're using open ear speakers. The last thing I do want to talk about that I forgot to mention was the fact that we have a power button here. This is the button that we're going to be able to use, press and holding it to turn it on. We're also going to be using this if you want to shut down the glasses so that you don't have them sitting there using battery all the time. Last but not least, if you ever do want to do a quick look, meaning you're just using the glasses, the displays are off, but you want to get a quick notification of what's going on, you actually just tap once on the actual temple on the right side and a display turns on for a quick, maybe about two, three seconds, showing us a little bit of a preview, letting us know if basically, you know, weather information, notification, and if music is playing. And as you can see there, uh, although it's not very clear, but you can definitely see here that the Rain Neo logo is turning on. And this is basically kind of going through its own boot up sequence here. Now on your device, you just need to download the Rain Neo application, turn them on, and I do need to put the glasses on for them to actually turn on. Now, I did want to show you guys real quick how to pair them. You just need to install the application directly from the Google Play Store. It's going to turn on a QR code in front of you. On the glasses themselves, you'll actually get the ability of doing so. There's a little bit of a window that I'm going to show you real quick. It says that basically it works with iOS and Android. You just basically point it straight into that and the glasses will start pairing directly into the app. Once they are paired, they'll show up directly into this. And the nice thing about them, although I un I'll go ahead and pair again, although I unpair them and I'm pairing them again to the device, it doesn't lose any of its configuration because a lot of that is actually installed on here. You do need to give the application itself uh, permission You'll be able to have it uh, give it permission to access notifications connected to your local Wi-Fi. So this is not just connected to my phone via Bluetooth. It's also connected to, um, connected to my home Wi-Fi. You have the ability of going in here and turning on the ring, the ring, configuring it and pairing it directly. And that's one of the things that you can actually able to do there. Last but not least, we do have the ability of turning on whisper mode and that's by default turned off. So when you're listening on it, this is something that you need to turn on if you want to be able to activate it. Next, we have the ability of going in there and configuring the brightness level as well as the volume level on the app. So this is the volume on the actual unit itself. And I'm also able to basically configure it here if I want to on the glasses. As you notice right there, I'm actually configuring the audio and that's the volume level directly on my phone. So you're able to configure that and, and update it from there. Beyond that on the bottom, you'll notice that there's a list of applications and this is gonna be the available apps that you're able to download and update. So you're able to go into them. If it isn't installed, you'll be able to go in there and configure it. If you do wanna remove it, you go into the setting and you you actually hit the button that says uninstall so that way you can remove it and then it doesn't have to have any problems there you see there's quite a few there's snake xr i'm going to show you a quick clip of the snake xr right now it's actually pretty nice it's a very nice game uh, there's the ability of updating the navigation in here the translation functionality that we have in here as well as vision go ar and some of the other archery and uh, drawing and if i'm not mistaken i think there's the watermelon game and then there's the stack xr all of these can be configured and customized in there. When it comes down to the album, now this is the video or images that you've taken with the glasses, there's two ways of transferring them. You can either transfer them directly on the actual device, meaning I go ahead and turn on start syncing. I'm going to say connecting. It's automatically going to connect to my glasses. It's going to say connected. And you're going to see all of the images and everything that I've been using there. We're actually going to take a look at that video over there. If you're basically not connected before, it'll ask you to pair, or it'll directly connect. So basically this is more of a direct connection now between them. And when you want to download them, you just basically go through and you say sync or save the actual image itself. And then you can save it directly onto your smartphone. Or again, connect it to your PC with the USB-C cable and that proprietary connector and you're pretty much set. From there, all we have to do is essentially, if you go to the last section, which is me, you can go into the version number. You'll notice that this is where you'll be able to check if there is any updates. I did receive, I think, two updates since I've had them, and this is running the latest version of the software, which as you can see there, 0.3.6. Permission, you do need to turn this on so that the glasses can communicate with the app without having it actually being put to sleep. Feedback, and of course, everything else is pretty much straightforward. Other than that, there's a settings tab. Again, there's a little bit more in here. 
network setting this is where you'll be able to configure it it does by default try to use a network sharing directly over bluetooth wireless lan is where you'll be able to configure that information there sleep and lock you can customize the experience auto locking and of course uh, shortcuts is what we talked about before so it's the swipe forward on the right temple takes a picture swipe back takes us directly into dialogue translation which is again a really nice option you can customize or calibrate the gyroscope ar calibration as well storage configuration you can go in there 128 is what we have i use i'm used basically 14.5 keeping in mind that part of that is also the ui as well as what i've been actually using to record uh, languages out of the box it's set to be in english there is no other option uh, device name in there and of course device model if you do want to unpair it from the device this would also be where you do it so i'm pretty sure you want to see exactly how they look again the glasses are not small this is not intended to be uh, basically kind of like a, an incognito type of a solution everybody will know what you're wearing but at the end of the day it's what they're able to offer you that make them unique again if you want to wear them outside make sure you put the basically the sunglass covers on them otherwise when you're indoors you just basically put them on and if you have your prescription it'll be already in there as you can see here these will stick out a little bit behind you i imagine if you have a little bit more hair than me actually if you have any hair more than me <laughs> this may not be as much of an issue right now again with my configuration you're able to see everything the first thing i'll say is first and foremost right now as i'm looking at you there's nothing in front of me if i just go ahead and press the button and I could probably say it, the way it looks like as far as readability and what we're looking at here, I, I do wear prescription, but I'm still able to see them because I actually have been using them for quite some time. It is feeling more so that it's about maybe three, maybe four feet away from me. And as it is positioned, if I'm looking at you guys right now, the text as far as the notification bar is on the top that gives me access to basically a Bluetooth connection, Wi-Fi connection, as well as the ability to give me a time and the percentage of the battery on the glasses, not on the phone, on the glasses. And then, of course, on the bottom, I have access to the, I would call it the navigation bar. If I just tap once on it, it's going to bring up a notification quickly, telling me if there's music playing, the little shortcuts up there, and it goes away in about a second and a half or so. But also gives me weather information, depending if you have that configured or not. And that's literally everything else when you're not using them. If you are going to be using them, uh, the battery that we have in here is about 590 milliampere. It's rated to go with about three hours of continuous usage, meaning uh, translation, functions, uh, playing games, and so on. You should be able to go from 100 to about empty all the way with that experience. I will say, though, because of the cable position sitting at the top temple and the wire runs a little bit back, I probably would say that if you're able to be in a position where you're sitting down, you just want to be able to use them, and let's say you're watching a movie, there really isn't that big of an issue for you to be able to have them connected and run them a little bit longer. I will also say as well that it, when it is charging or using heavy usage, the warming, the warming part that used to be in the front with some of the other solutions, it'll be here sitting on the left. So just something to keep that in mind. But otherwise, again, about two and a half hours to three hours is what I've been expecting and what I've been actually getting with these glasses. So let's talk about what can you do and what can't you do with these glasses. Again, these are AR glasses, so they're intended to augment the reality that we see. So the first and foremost process of this is the simplicity of it. If I want to be able to initiate the assistant, I press and hold here on the top left for two seconds and it turns on the assistant in front of me. This is one of those shortcuts that we talked about. The other thing is we also have the ability of changing basically the volume level on the left side. As far as the right side is where you get most of the, uh, I would say, touch interface. You're able to navigate by going front and back. And those are going to be the main things that you can do. Uh, right now, I just swiped and by mistake. That took me into translation, which, again, is one of those shortcuts you want to be able to keep in mind. So I'll go ahead and push the power button. Uh, if I press in, uh, basically a uh, single tap or double tap are going to be the forward and backwards function. And there will always be a display in front of you letting you know which one is which. Sometimes going into an app is single tap, but then sometimes going out of an app is to double tap to exit. And then you have to click one tap to confirm that you want to exit. So depending on the app that you're using. We have translation in three different modes. What I really like about them is that there's a standard translation just by translating the person that you're with. And this is something to be very clear. Initially, when I got these glasses, one of the things that I didn't realize is that every time I was trying to speak multiple languages to get the glasses to translate, I didn't understand why the glasses wouldn't work. And that was because the glasses, by definition, cancel the audio of the person wearing them. They know because of the proximity of the mics that I'm actually the one talking and therefore it was not translating. But once the audio is recognized to come from a different source, meaning I'm not talking, it actually works perfectly fine and it's able to do translation for many different languages I'm showing you guys right now. So really nice, very simple. There's a second option where it's a dialogue translation where it gives you basically a, a kind of a, like a translate as you're watching. And the third one is the one that I really like that is very unique. It's actually a face tracking translation function. And then the reason behind that is 
If you remember in the beginning when I talked to you guys and I said the text was sitting right in front of us, right? Well, obviously, if you're talking to somebody, the last thing you want is text to be floating in front of their face and you're not looking at them, but it creates a weird situation. The face tracking using the front facing camera that we have in here allows us to actually put the text above the speaker. So if let's say you're talking to me, the text would be basically floating right above my head as you're looking at me through the glasses, making it very functional. Again, little small aesthetic things like this make it functional and uh, seamless in the sense of how it should be when you're talking to somebody straight up. Navigation is where it gets even more interesting. The first thing I tell, I'll tell you guys is it, this is where that secondary small displays or the two displays that we have on the right side are going. What these will allow us to do when we initiate initiate uh, basically navigation is obviously initiate the function of search and you're using voice search. There is a way of actually interacting with the uh, navigation app on the phone, but unfortunately it does not translate to the glasses. So you do need to actually get into it and it does need to be connected to the internet through your phone, either by Bluetooth or via basically hotspot if you're having any concerns or issues there. For me, for the most part, at least with the current version of the software that I have on my S24 Ultra, I did need to actually connect it over Wi-Fi, uh, basically a hotspot for my phone whenever I was outside. But when I'm home, it worked perfectly fine again because it's connected to the Wi-Fi network. And it gives you the option of basically providing either riding, you know, basically bicycle riding configuration or walking. Again, as these are not intended to be driven with. And once it starts navigating, this is where it gets even cooler. It drops the navigation uh, configuration to the bottom right and also gives you audio cue, but it has, it has a gyroscope configuration allowing you to know which direction to go. So as you're looking at it and you're turning around, it tells you if you're going in the right direction and where you need to turn. And again, as a step-by-step -step function in the glasses. Uh, the other function that I really liked about them is when we got into the assistant function in here, there's two different assistants you're able to pick from, is the content awareness of what you're doing. You're able to actually talk to them in a, in a conversational manner. I started off that one day I was hanging out with my buddy Juan Carlos Bagnell. Actually, I'll show you guys a picture here. We had lunch together and I actually just mentioned that I was going to go to a Lebanese restaurant and the conversation kind of went back and forth as you're seeing there with the B-roll and it was really nice to see how informative that the actual AI was trying to be. It wasn't just responding back saying, hey, yeah, I hope you like it. They have good stuff. No, it started recommending different options of what I could try, also asking me what I like to try. And the conversation could go a little bit for a while. So that was one of the really nice options that we have in here. It's advanced enough that it knows what you're trying to talk about, but it also is fancy enough that it's having that conversation, um, I would say basically conversation style information and allowing you to learn more about what it knows and recommending things to try in case you've never tried it before. So we've talked about all of this. And of course, we can also play music. That's one of the other options that we have, changing the volume level here. And you're able, of course, to go in there. There's a dedicated music player that's sitting on the far right. Um, there's settings in there that you're able to go in there and change certain things, turn on certain permissions, again, built into this. You're also able to repair or reconnect if it loses connection to your smartphone or, or directly into the configuration for the ring. Speaking of the ring, it's actually something very unique and very functional. As you can imagine, if you're, let's say, riding a bike or unless you're doing something where your hands are busy, the ring becomes very much like the gesture pad on the right side. It replaces the tapping and the double tapping with the fact that it's on the ring. You can swipe right and left as opposed to having going forward. We've talked about a lot of the features, what you can do and all the things that we've been able to do with this. But you're probably wondering is how does the cameras on this work and how good is the quality? So we're outside right now using the X2 and I'm actually using the microphones on them just to show you guys the audio quality. What you should expect if you're having maybe a phone call or even doing a video call with somebody that you're able to use, again, Bluetooth audio on. We're using the S24 Ultra. We're using the actual pro mode video here. And of course, switching it over here. So hopefully, even with a little bit of wind, you're able to hear me pretty good. Uh, the shades on them are actually very nice, very easy to put on and take off. But I think with the fact that I'm actually sitting with the sun facing me straight up, this actually is going to be the best look that we can get. But it's, again, easily on, easy off. So now we're doing a quick demo of the video recording on the X2s themselves. We're looking straight at the sky. And what I like about it is it doesn't actually add anything to the space. So what you're looking in here essentially is the, the normal view. You see a little counter at the top, a stop option at the bottom, and it says tap to stop. So you can actually control it by tapping it. But the biggest thing is you're not actually stepping away from the view. You're not seeing a video screen of something else in front of you. You're actually looking at what you're recording. And when you want to turn around, you just turn your face around, walk around. And again, it's a first person view. So just make sure to keep your head leveled. 
and everything is going to look good. Now, as you saw there, with a little bit of wind, you were still able to hear me. And of course, when we were doing the video, it worked absolutely fantastic. Although you probably noticed that the framing was a little bit off. Again, with some practice, you'll get used to be able to do that. Um, I did use this in the car. I wasn't supposed to. I didn't realize that until I actually took them with me one time. But during the drive, I was also able to record a quick clip of me while I was driving my car on the freeways here in Los Angeles. The biggest thing I'll probably say is at the end of the day is these glasses are very much a tool that helps you get more out of life. They're intended to basically give you more information, give you an augmented reality experience, and also make it so that your hands are a little bit free to be able to do things while you don't have to actually get access to your phone all the time. Notifications, phone calls will definitely come through here. You'll get the notifications, although you can't respond to them. Um, and as far as phone calls, you'll definitely be able to make and receive phone calls in here as it does have a built-in dialer. So there's apps in there, there's translation, there's navigation, uh, there's a lot of options in there. And I can imagine that they'll be able to add even more functionalities or even more apps and games onto these glasses. I do want to mention that they did include for me uh, this nice little musical instrument here that it actually has a built-in function directly within the UI where it overlays an actual template on top of it and you're able to use uh, the little bells in here basically to kind of learn how to play music with the musical instrument that we get in there. Those are some of the nice little augmented reality and things that you could use to learn. I can imagine this working on a keyboard or working on something that it overlays a, a pattern and you're able to learn how to actually press these keys based on how the glasses are performing. So. With that being said, uh, I feel like this is a really great solution into the endeavor or the experience of getting an augmented solution or a basically an on-device computing for glasses. Now, I've actually seen these glasses in their early versions, even before the pandemic. So this is something to keep in mind that they've been working on these for quite some time. And the product that we have in here is definitely the summation of all of that work. Is it perfect? I'm probably going to say that not 100%. There are still a little bit of quirks here and there that I recommend you keeping in mind. A, right now, at least on my S24 Ultra, I can't use the Bluetooth internet sharing. So for navigation, when I'm outside, I do need to turn on my hotspot. Not an issue. Once you configure it, it connects right away. It works. But it's something to keep in mind. Uh, the last thing is, again, there's been a few software updates, more information has been coming in and more apps have been added. I didn't get a chance to use those at the beginning, but I'm imagining as time goes on with more updates, things will get a little, it will get even better for us. So one thing to keep in mind is you are going into some type of a bleeding edge technology with the new tech that we're looking in here. They're great, they're fast, they give us a lot of information, a lot of storage in there, and they're very smooth in the, well, in the interface that we get there. So. At the end of the day, my recommendation would be is if this is something that interests you, make sure to check out the links in the description below to find out how to get your own pair of the Ray Neo X2s. If this is something that interests you, but you have more questions, please make sure to drop me some questions here in the comments below. We'll try to talk and get you some answers. And of course, at the end of the day, thank you for the support. Thank you for checking out this video and I will see you in the next one.